and to my utmost surprise, the man went away and came back with a full gallon of electrolyte. And I asked him, what exactly are you doing with this? And he said, my installer told me to always use the electrolyte to fill up the battery. What? That is crazy. Are you kidding me? This is insane. Hi guys, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sound, the usual suspect, all right? Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. Hope everybody's cool. Let's look at the nine ways you can maintain your tubular battery or your open flooded lead acid battery to be able to give you the very best. And I maintain this guy is my all time favorite. But if you haven't subscribed, come on, we can no longer wait to have you as part of this community, all right? Because when one person joins us, we are so happy because we need everybody to be abreast of what's going on in the solar technology. So from today, henceforth, nobody, and I mean nobody, is ever going to tell you about what's going on in the world of solar technology. Do not forget to comment, do not forget to like, and do not forget to share. Let's get into it. Nine ways you can maintain your tubular battery and make it last so very long. And I know you really like that, right? The bulk of the money you're going to spend setting up your solar system is going to go to the battery. So I will tell you the do's and don'ts, the things you should and the things you shouldn't do to ensure that this guy attains its lifespan. Okay, so your flooded lead acid battery and your tubular battery attains its full lifespan. If you're using this battery, which is a tubular battery or open flooded lead acid battery, you would know that it's not a maintenance free battery. So if you're using a lithium battery, that's a maintenance free battery. If you're using a gel, AGM, all of those are a maintenance free battery. But if you're using a tubular battery, my friend, you gotta do everything it takes to maintain this battery to ensure that it attains its full lifespan. So what exactly is the nine things you have to do? Number one, ensure that wherever you're keeping this battery is well ventilated, where you have a lot of air moving around, okay? The windows are open to ensure that you have a free flow of air in the environment where this battery is. The reason that has to be is that number one, when this battery is charging, it emits hydrogen into the atmosphere. So you don't want to be in the same room where the hydrogen is circling and staying. So it's very important that it's uh, kept in a place where there's lots of air. And secondly, when the battery is charging, there's a tendency it can get hot. So if you put it in a very enclosed place and there is no form of ventilation going on, the battery is going to get very hot. And very hot temperatures cut short the lifespan of the battery. So it's very important. But if you have a place outside of your house, like in your compound, okay or around the complex or vicinity wherever you have these installations or you can keep it outside as long as it's not directly under the sun it's okay so that the temperature is not so hot when the battery is charging and the hydrogen that is emitted from the battery when it's charging can find a free movement and dissipate into the air Number two, always ensure that you monitor the battery to ensure that the water level or the liquid level doesn't go down so well. Now you can see some kind of liquid in the battery. So let me shake it for you guys to see. Can you see the liquid? That's called electrolyte. It's a mixture of sulfuric acid and distilled water. Okay, it's not supposed to go down completely. So if you look here, you're gonna find the plates of the battery. Okay, so if the water goes down or the electrolyte goes down way too much, the plates are going to be exposed and if the plates are exposed and you keep charging the battery it is going to cause a very huge and permanent damage to the battery so always ensure that when the liquid level goes down you replace it you hydrate the batteries with a distilled water so you're meant to pour in a distilled water not electrolyte do not do that okay so i'm going to tell you guys this story so i had a call from a distressed client and he wanted to find out why his um, solar system weren't working. He has spent a lot of money trying to fix these things, buying a lot of solar panels, charge controller, inverter. You know, the entire solar system works. All right. Now, it's a fairly new system, but the problem that he's having at the moment is that the batteries are no longer holding on to power. So he wanted to find out exactly what the problem is with his system. So when I got into the place, everything seemed okay. But what I noticed was that the cell, some of the cells of the battery, uh, the liquid in the battery were a lot lower than the other ones, which shouldn't be. And that's a sign that there's a problem because all of them are supposed to be on the same level at all time. They're supposed to all 
go down at the same level okay so you're meant to top them up at the same time but if one is lower than the other one then that's a problem so i asked him if he had a distilled water so that we can you know fill up the battery and to my utmost surprise the man went away and came back with a full gallon of electrolyte and i asked him what exactly are you doing with this and he said his installer told him to always make sure that he replaces uh, the lost electrolytes with another electrolyte that is crazy what are you kidding me this is insane this should never happen in the first place it should never happen what happens is that the more you pour electrolytes into your battery as opposed to using a distilled water, you are increasing the SG level of the battery. Every battery manufacturer has an SG level that they've specified for the battery. So what happens is that if you're introducing an external electrolyte, you are increasing the SG of the battery, which is going to make the concentration so high and the battery plates are going to be damaged. That's not what you want. So whoever is advising you to use electrolyte to fill up the battery, that is wrong in all levels it shouldn't even happen in the first place so okay. guys learn from this situation always ensure that you replenish the battery with a distilled water not electrolyte all right and that's number two number three always ensure that the battery voltage of the battery is selected either in your charge controller or your inverter so every battery manufacturer has a specified charging voltage for their battery and the specified floating voltage for the battery as well so you need to find out the charging voltage for your own battery and select that in the charge controller and the inverter so if you randomly charge the batteries by just selecting a generic charging voltage Either of these two things can happen. Number one is that you could undercharge the battery and number two is that you could overcharge the battery. Either way, none of them is good for the battery, okay? So if you undercharge the battery, the battery is gonna sulfate over time, stratify, okay? But if you overcharge the battery, it could also cause a permanent damage to the battery cells. So the battery has to be charged at the recommended charging voltage by the manufacturers of the battery. And number four, it's gonna be equalization. It's very important that periodically, if you're using a tubular battery or an open flooded lead acid battery, it's very important that you equalize the batteries to ensure that all the cells that are dropping below uh, the voltage of the other cells are all brought to be on the same level. So if you have the multimeter, if you open up all of these caps, you're definitely going to see uh, if you test it, you will see that each of the cells, because right here is uh, a 6 volt battery by 370 amps, an OPZ battery. So it has three cells, okay, but um, a 12 volt battery would have a six cells. All right, so if you open each of them and test it with a multimeter, you will find out that sometimes you will notice that some of the cells are below two volts because each of the cells is supposed to give you two volts right so if you test it and it's giving you below two volts there has to be an equalization to be able to bring all the cells to be on the same level is very important okay so equalization has to happen periodically every 15 days every 30 days once in two months but it just has to happen to ensure that uh, the batteries do not sulfate that's very important number five what is number five going to be always ensure that all the wires are properly insulated so you're going to have a lot of wires running from one terminal to the other from the negative terminal to the positive terminal from the loops that goes from one battery to the other depending on what you're connecting if you're connecting in series or you're connecting in parallel whatever you're doing there's going to be a lot of wire going on and it's important that every single part of that wire where you have the naked wires exposed all right you need to insulate it with a black tape and ensure that you do not encounter what you call short circuit. Okay, so the short circuit is essentially when you have the negative and the positive terminal touching together. The batteries don't like that, okay? So you need to ensure that none of the wires are exposed. They are properly insulated and arranged neatly to ensure that there's no short circuit uh, spark or accident in that battery fleet. And you don't keep stuff like this. I mean, these are tools you could use. I mean, after using these tools, don't place them on the batteries, okay? Because this has the ability to short circuit the battery, so you can see. So here is a positive terminal and here is a negative terminal. So if you have the spanners here, the spanner could short circuit the battery. So the short circuit of the battery will definitely affect the lifespan of the battery. That's not what you want. Definitely, number six, number six, what is it gonna be? 
All right, cleaning up the terminals of the battery. So you notice after a while from the positive and the negative terminals, you will notice that there's a corrosion at the battery terminals. That corrosion needs to be cleaned off. It causes friction in the flow of current. So uh, most times when you have that mold and you touch it, when the battery is working or when it's being charged, when you touch the terminals, you'll notice that it's getting hot. There's a restriction in the free flow of current in the battery system. So what you need to do is to clean up the battery terminals. Clean the positive terminal and you clean the negative terminal. And after cleaning the terminals, you grease it with a petroleum jelly. It's very important because uh, petroleum jelly in itself is a very good conductor of current. Okay, so you don't put it grease or anything else. It has to be a petroleum jelly. Uh, most times when you're buying the battery, you see those small jellies in its own small bags. Okay, that's what you're going to apply at the terminals. And once that's done, you're going to experience a free flow of current in the system and your batteries will keep working well. So that's number six. In your installation, there should be a provision. Always, never leave it out. There should be a provision for a temperature sensor. There has to be a temperature sensor here to read the temperature of the battery. So it's very important that you have your temperature sensor connected to this battery, then connected to your charge controller or to your inverter. All right, so they'll be reading the temperature. So if the temperature is too cold, the charge controller is going to step up the voltage and ensure that it brings it to its normal operational temperature. And if the temperature is too high, it's going to bring it down too. And that's temperature compensation right there. So it's going to perform temperature compensation to ensure that the battery is charging optimally at the recommended temperature. In that way, you would have succeeded in preserving the lifespan of this battery. So it's going to give you its full value in terms of its service life, okay? Because a very hot temperature, like I said earlier, shortens the lifespan of the batteries. Number eight, make sure there's a battery equalizer connected to these batteries. Okay, so the battery equalizer in its job ensures that it's constantly sinking the voltage of all the batteries. So when you test each of the individual batteries, you're definitely going to get the same thing because the physical equalizer of the battery management system that you have on the battery ensures that the batteries have a synchronized or uniform charge. So the batteries get to charge at the same voltage and also discharge at the same voltage. It's very important. There has to be a presence of a battery management system on your battery system. Make sure the batteries are well spaced out. You need to give them some room. So when you're stacking the batteries together, because when you have a lot of batteries, you have like four batteries, eight batteries, always ensure that the batteries are not close tight uh, to each other because the batteries expand when it's charging. That's it guys for this video. Thank you so very much. If you haven't subscribed, come on. You need to subscribe right now before you forget. <laughs> because <laughs> we need you to be here all right so as soon as you subscribe you'll be the very first to be notified as soon as we have fresh and brand new videos which happens here every single week and the more you subscribe the more we can reach out to more people who also need to see this video and have this information in their banks don't forget to comment do not forget to share and of course don't forget to like thank you guys and see you in the next video